Oh, he's mad at you guys. Uh, well, we prepared for some dragons. Uh, Makut spent some time with the Minotaurs. Bryn and Madar heart faces at each other. Mina and Eli heart faces at each other. Um, and then uh, the dragon fights come. Big old 50 dragons fly over a shar towards uh, the mountains. A black dragon, uh, bleach white, Grathmorn, and Dershurich, and lots of whittled wagons. I spelled it with a W. Uh, there's uh, some Ramiel summoning. Uh, Bryn stays with Madar and Ramiel, and they uh, to protect uh, people from the hordes, but uh, eventually they turn their attention to. Dorasterix, because he is clearly the bigger threat. Uh, Bryn and Madar basically uh, take that side pitch solo, uh, with Ramiel helping keeping them up. While um, Abrashmina and Makud and Eli and uh, Enthris take on uh, Scraithmorn. Uh, Pretty much uh, tearing him up so bad alongside uh, Nahasira and Deonte that to get away from us, he like dive bombed into the ground and uh, <laughs> to actually do damage because he wasn't hitting anybody. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, burning through his defenses. Until uh, Eli is able to cast Feeble Mind, but then before like the feeble minded Scraithmorn can do anything, Makud kills the shit out of him. And with uh, Psychic Crush, Bryn makes Drasterix's brain explode. And that's pretty much where we left off. It was a very, very long, 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 long fight. And we barely made it.
uh, he will look around uh, at the assembled minotaur from his vantage on top of the very large and very dead dragon. He hold out the pillar uh, up towards them. And as he like holds it out, he is joined like hand first, but forming out of the sand, Enthris will stand beside him. And maybe there is the elements of other ancestors swirling around. Uh, Makud like looks back towards the uh, like towards the others and then like to Enthris uh, and sort of quietly so the others don't everyone else doesn't hear I guess it's like time time for what He looks around uh, and he's seen into this place or seen it through it, enters his eyes um, and it's 
strange, but then there've been many strange places. <clears throat> uh, he'll look at his reflection in the pool. Is it him or is it different or is he glowing? He'll like put his hand up uh, to his face, like run it along the side, like up one of the horns uh, where there's usually, you know, decoration and chains and uh, everything else hanging from it. And then he'll like look back up again, look into the mist uh, and finally back to Enthrus. You saw all this? Everything that was to happen? He uh, touches his chest, uh, looks down a little, and uh, thinks about all of those parts of him. But uh, he kind of like shrugs. What? Why me? That is so many of the Madhu that I know. It is a lot of the people that I know. The dwarves? I kind of like scratches the side of his head. They're all a part of me too. He starts to nod along. Uh, <clears throat> uh, 
uh, and there's maybe like a lot of memories go by like you know this would be the the montage bit of all oh, you know the smiling faces and the embracing and the different people that we've met and saved and feasted with and uh brings a smile to his face Uh, he would come to stand up and, you know, worry a shake uh, and pat on back and that kind of thing, embrace uh, his family. Um, and sort of through, over and above or uh, through all of these people, like he'll try and catch Enthris's eye. Uh, <laughs> I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but I think I'm starting to get it. He'll uh, look around at all the gathered. Um, well, um, and he'll like scratch the back of his neck. Don't feel you have to wait for me. Sounds like I have a lot to do. Uh, he'll uh, turn to him and um, uh, like grip grip his hand uh, well if everything you say is true, I can't do it without friends. 
I can't do it without you. And he'll put his other hand uh, on top of the, the two hands together. And... Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Abrashmina would recognize what was happening, especially since, do I have advantage because of ASMR? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 24. Yeah, and uh, I think Abrashmina is sort of watching in awe and, uh, you know, tears streaking down her face or whatever. And uh, whenever uh, Maku stands straight once again, like she just sort of uh, uh, calls out, I stand here as witness to the ascension. Makood and she like does like a huge like booming Makood with like thaumaturgy. Oh, he's going to be like a, an Ashari god, Makuth the Chainbreaker. <laughs> god, god of protection and the breaking of chains or something. I know, we have to go break some chains. <laughs> oh, well, that's... After, like, Abrashmina gives Maku, like, a, um, a great big hug, and, uh, just, like, says, I am proud of you, and then, uh, she's gonna go help heal wounded minotaurs and dwarves and stuff with what magic she has left. 
I imagine like he's <laughs> still processing what's going on and uh, mm -hmm. uh, whether that comes before or after he's left the dragon, he's probably being hugged by various people and then like probably big one arm and like as you like hug him, he'll pick you up like with one arm uh, <laughs> and just kind of press you uh, to him. Uh, as he's surveying all of this that is going on, just like past your shoulder. Mm. I, uh, that was, I didn't, I didn't know that was going to happen when I killed a really big dragon. I don't think many gods know that it is going to happen uh, when they ascend. That is uh, definitely what happened. I am glad I... That I was here to see it. It could not happen to a better Minotaur. And she'll like, give him a big kiss on <laughs> his cow cheek. <laughs> I'm glad uh, everyone was still here to see it. And... Even though there's a lot of people dead, I imagine he still he still sees them standing there, or as spirits. Uh, the two worlds are, you know, kind of blending a little bit together. Uh, and he'll uh, let you down and be embraced by others. Mm. Maybe Makuth will get the wings. Oh, <laughs> the Red Bull gives you wings, but it's... <laughs> Red Dragons give you wings? <laughs> yes. Uh, so Bryn will eventually make her way over to Makuth. So Makuth the Dragon Slayer going to be one hell of a story. Sorry, I disconnected. Oh no. What's, what's Brent up to? Brent's coming to see Makood. Oh. Cool. Howie? Yes. Makood uh, the Dragon Slayer. One hell of a one hell of a story to tell. Uh, he <laughs> looks around at the the huge. I'm just <laughs> presuming they're coming over, and he's still standing on top of this thing. Uh, though. Uh, he he just kind of like looks at the impact site, uh, and back to Bryn. I think um. I'm going to need to t you to tell that story to a lot of people. It's a good thing I like to talk and tell stories. You uh, said you used to go on tour? <laughs> <laughs> of a sort, yeah. We should do one of those when the... We're finished here. Spread the word of Makud the uh, Dragon Slayer. <clears throat> Not just Dragon Slayer, there's a few other things now. Oh, and yeah? He kind of like looks down at himself. Uh, and maybe he can see that golden flame inside. I feel. Different. Different's good, right? It's it's definitely good. Uh, and he's just kind of I don't know, slightly like flexing his like hand and like his arm muscles and things like that. He just everything is I don't know peak minotaur perfection. Um. 
I I don't know uh, exactly how to describe it, but maybe you could help me find the words. Um, Mina seems to know more about it than I do. But <clears throat> yeah, she's good at knowing way. that stuff, right? Yeah. She's definitely the smartest. Don't you tell her I said that. <laughs> Uh, and he'll uh, like uh, open his arms wide, like offering a hug to both you and Madar. Give you a hug. So how you took out the little one. Glad that you didn't was get pretty, away. That was pretty incredible, wasn't it? I certainly can't hit anything that far away, so that was pretty good making his head explode. Well, I've been kind of wanting to do that for a while. Even I was surprised by that last bit, though. It's Don't been worry. a day of surprises. Indeed. I, uh... I saw them flying over the city. I'm going to admit, my heart dropped into my stomach. You got lucky there, I think. Yeah, I. Well, I had a moment thinking the same, but. I know, I don't know if we were necessarily protecting the wrong thing, but. The... A lot of people out there that need our protection can't be everywhere. But we should keep trying. At least we know where we're needed next. Unless Nahasira has some other plan or some bigger dragon that needs killing. Uh, <laughs> it's probably difficult to see, like, the tail end of Scrathborn, an even bigger dragon. I mean, there's Maybe always a bigger dragon. If you say so, then maybe that's what I need to kill next. All the best stories have a bigger dragon. think about it well i mean we might add some embellishments later um some yeah we may we'll we'll talk about it okay we'll we'll hammer out the details before we start getting the story out right the friends here they'll start spreading their version of it and then we'll come in with the true version of it Sure. Great. Well, everyone here has has had their part to play uh, oh. in this story. Certainly. We just uh, need to make sure that other people know what happened here. I'm sure, I mean, people in the show probably could have seen it happen. But uh, there's a few things we need to well, a few chains we need to break in a shell first. Apparently that's that is our next mission, I suppose. So we feast and then we break some chains. It sounds like a good order. And hell. Uh have a big grin on his face and um I think I didn't use fly up so either fly or maybe like to meme dragon hooker repel from uh the muzzle of Scrathmon uh into the waiting crowd and uh feast.
she'll take his hand or follow, whichever. She'll do the same. Imagine that there are uh, 
tears uh, from all of the the visions. Uh, yeah, then Abrashmina just kind of gets to her feet and uh, brushes the sand off before looking back up at the night sky and says, "Thank you, thank you for allowing me to see." And uh, I am grateful for everything that that has come to pass. And uh, she'll like bow her head in prayer. For uh, heading back to the camp and others and warmer things. And can I get those names in the chat, please? So I can spell them right in my notes. I like to imagine that it wasn't. Not that every day you have a feast of dragon next to a huge dragon thing, but it was like there was something, you know, slightly divine about that that first feast. Um, at the revelry just. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that everyone was like caught up as one almost like giant hive mind entity or something of uh of just feasting and celebration and it you know went on for hours and hours until there was no light <laughs> sure that's good Breakfast whiskey. Hair of the dog that bit you. This hangover cure. This is where the tradition of breakfast whiskey is enshrined. <laughs> another tenant. Breakfast yeah, because yeah, another t tenant. All the the breakfast whiskey. <laughs> My followers are going to get nothing done because they have to drink every meal of the day. <laughs> Communion, yeah, but alcoholic. And, and something that, you know, like a wafer to represent, or like a lizard on a stick to represent mm -hmm. the dragons. Mm -hmm. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Justice. Justice. <laughs> oh. 
like to I would like to speak to Nahasira before we do that. Uh, yeah. Head back up her mountain. Do the others want to come with? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I have some questions. <laughs> Specifically, when can we expect you in the shot? <laughs> Are you going that way? Because we were thinking about going that way, and you know, carpooling is much easier, so better for the environment. I was just going to ask her if she had a ring. <laughs> sure. She probably she has a big stash. We probably should have called first. We all just like reverse out and then very loudly like get to the front door. And then I said, <laughs> Fuck you. I said, ahem. <laughs> oh. I think things went much better than we were anticipating, considering. But uh, we must go back to Ashar now and do our best to mitigate some of the injustices there. That hmm? that might be a possibility. We should require it. It will not be an easy thing what we plan to do. Then we shall. I'm glad to hear that you are willing to help. I know that that isn't um, how things are normally done.
we will try to uh, keep your involvement as small as possible. Perhaps just a bit of show, if we are lucky. I hope it will not uh, move beyond that. Well, hopefully it, uh, I'm sure you will be as good at this as you are at everything else. <laughs> Um, actually, I wonder if I might uh, ask a favor. Uh, would you happen to have a, a ring made from the metal of a, a falling star? I can acquire from you. Um... It's really complicated to explain, but um, I think you're able to sense that I'm not entirely human. Well, I uh, carry inside me the spirit of, I guess, call themselves the quarry and uh, in order to essentially restart their race, this uh, spirit needs another vessel. And uh, she was pretty particular about her request. It is very fitting. Thank you for this. If you need anything in return, just ask. It's appreciated nonetheless.
um, I think uh, earlier on in the conversation when uh, Mina was talking about mitigating like the problems or the unpleasantness in the show, Maku would definitely be like leaning over to Brynn and goes, she means punch some elves, right? I think that's exactly what that means. <laughs> Uh, that's really the only way I know to make it, mitigate these things. <laughs> good, good. Yeah. Um, and and then like to, after every, uh, towards the end of this, or after everyone's had their bit, um, Makudo like just touch Nahasira on the like the tip of a snout or something, which is he doesn't he didn't do before, but because she accepted him, uh, he would just like put his hand there uh, and thank you for your part in all this. I know you say we gave a lot, but you were there too, standing against all of your kin for the betterment of all of us, all the little people in this world. And then he'll just, like, shout out to Deontay as they're probably leaving. You did good, too! Yeah. I can see that so vividly in my mind, like fan art. Um, He's all like, but Nahasira. So either now or before we went up, depending on time and stuff Makud would have uh, I imagine like during the feast he still has this uh, bo- like Born of Two Worlds type thing where he can he's like celebrating with spirits and, and the living uh, at the same time um, and like giving them a send off and probably sees them go like this is the way it should be done. Uh, and he either spends some time now or before we went up, depending on time, like talking to the Jashur and any, uh, like you said, you know, some of the priestly types, the ones with the healing magic and the wise, you know, shaman types of uh, different tribes. Um, about uh, his experience and maybe during that there is uh, more consecrating of the like the dragon horns of this fight and the the fangs and the like the teeth are maybe given out um, as as necklaces and things and the horns may be added to the totems Or parts of them. <laughs> uh, uh, I am curious uh, what Maku or what Abrashmina and Bryn look like in uh, Maku's like weird double vision. Uh, Abrahashmina does wholeheartedly believe in him. (laughs) 
Yeah, that's what that, that's what I was kind of. Uh, okay. I was just kind of wondering if, like, he saw, like, our souls as well, uh, and, like, what, and what, uh... Like, he's able to dis detect Shay to some extent? Is that what you're asking? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's been this long. Yeah. <laughs> Why didn't you ask me that earlier? I would have totally shown you both my souls. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I imagine he would have, you know, talked about his experience during the party scene, mm -hmm. depending on how sober people were. There was probably definitely that conversation is all you had to do is show me your soul. This is I'm such a visual learner, you know. Um, <laughs> I mean, uh, I've only talked about it like every day since Shay started appearing to me. But that's okay. She hasn't, Maku. Don't let her confuse you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he he would describe, you know, his general experience of going to the misty place and uh seeing people and like in the vaguest terms like his portfolio or the simplest terms like he doesn't really mm -hmm. get it all necessarily right now but being nascent uh and all nascent divinity <laughs> um but he's trying to do uh his best as always. Mm -hmm. um, he also, uh, on top of the, uh, you know, the, the speaking with the living and stuff, um, I mean, some of the clans, I know, I know you were saying like they kind of broke and ran, the ones that kind of died, not everyone died, but like lots of them. He would honor those clans that fell, or all but fell in the fight. And like the survivors would be given, you know, the most things or the best things or whatever for their totems for them to um, uh, attract new people. Uh, I know, like, Enthris talked about the scattered people, and this is maybe like the first move towards that uniting that he doesn't want to do away with all of their culture and heritage but there's probably more intermingling now as he encourages the building up of those clans that fell in such large numbers or something yeah but still they took a fair bit of casualties so um he would honor them uh you know in front of others publicly with words and actions and things. Uh, and yeah, just make sure. And also he would thank the dwarves because he kind of sees them as his people. And presumably wishes them a good trip home. Um, curse. <laughs> uh, so dwarf Mardu relations are on the up. Um, I know, like we we broke, maybe broke the back of the dragons. But there's still going to be threats out there, like the weird cosmic horror stuff, and maybe the intermingling of the technology or something, or some of those kind of dragon bolt ballista things probably would do those eye, those big weird eye creatures some serious harm, that kind of stuff. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> um, so maybe there's some of that 
uh, though, though, you know, we've done a, a great thing here. There's still a lot to do. Uh, Abrashmina would tell the others about her visions and say that if we can, I would like to stop by the oasis. Maybe before we go into the city. Okay. Sure. Do you know where? And she'll vaguely describe where she knows that there's those graves near the oasis, because I'm sure that's like a thing. There's probably like, you know, the place where you go when you're having like your beach, and then like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then apparently she has to go pawn shop hunting. Uh <laughs> as we go back. Apparently. Mm. Maybe over breakfast she'll use uh, her little uh tarot cards, the diviner or whatever we decided to call them to uh <laughs> use whichever wine gives like the short phrase to give her the name of the pawn shop that has the <laughs> that the veil is in <laughs> or is that i know i know okay okay she she's got uh the um the fable glowing trail <laughs> leading her there like a thread <laughs> okay then yeah, she'll tell the others about like her little vision, and then ask to for them to go by the oasis on the way in. Sure. If everyone's ready. Yeah, I think so. Minotaurs have their marching orders or whatever that they're going to go spread the news to the other tribes and such. Uh, and dwarves are safely home. And I, I mean, we did say that Jari and the Wyverns were going to be around, and then they didn't entirely show, but I imagine they were in the periphery. Um, so, um, if you wanted to fly there, it might be an option. But uh, if you wanted to look cool, leaving. But. She'll give him a, a smile and then go up and give like a a small prayer, one that she's probably given many times before about uh, bearing witness to like a soul's passing. And, but uh, you know, this time it's more like she's saying hello and goodbye at the at the same time. Kind of like infusing it with like a little bit of uh, a sense of, 
Like, even though she didn't have like the best time at like the temple and, but she's, uh, has seen where it has brought her and it has brought her to do like great things. And she's like, end it with, uh, you are right. And, uh, then get up and say goodbye. I'm just going to say my head headcanon, maybe Makut sees your parents have heard that message and just <laughs> oh. gives them a little wave or something <laughs> as they disappear. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> So if you guys want to go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're up for it. <laughs> there is a... No, it's like, there's like a, a ancient relic that someone's just like using as like a coaster for a bird cage. <laughs> it really just pulls the whole outfit together. Let's go get it. <laughs> <laughs> there is only one place that Makud thinks about bird cages, and that was where we got some of the wyverns. Back to the pet shop. <laughs> <laughs> also, his beetle backpack, which presumably is still on him the entire time. Oh yeah, I completely <laughs> forgot about that. But it's a very quiet you... beetle. And my unicorn is my unicorn safe? <laughs> Seamus, you haven't found Seamus. No, Seamus mm. is Lord of the Spider Underworld now. Mm. <laughs> oh God, he's, he's going to be in Campaign Three. Like, mm -hmm. he is Campaign Three. I just like to like we all thought we were witnessing Maku descend like that whole like go golden hook thing lifting him up, but really it was the beetle stretching its wings and lifting him up <laughs> behind. <laughs> what we don't see is just like the beetle furiously being like. I love it. Yeah, that's where he's gonna get his wings. But instead of like big feathery angel wings, they're gonna be like huge, like scarab wings that are gonna be like badass and awesome and can cut people's faces whenever he like. They also like look like stained glass or something. Yeah. Radiant to the dawn. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> See, really wants me to have wings, so you know. I mean, you don't a barbarian, Steve, a barbarian so. with wings. Come on, man, <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> I'm kidding. You don't have to give him. I mean, it's sand and glass. And yeah, these it wings would be are look. <laughs> Black steak. I mean, it's sand and glass, not sand glass and wings. <laughs> I, mean, I think we teleported to the oasis. I don't want to presume. Uh, we have beads, huh? We have beads. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So we could be I mean, to the mirage, I guess, from the oasis. Yeah. I presume we got a long rest in. Yeah. So I could have used teleport to get us to the oasis, right? 
and if then we could have used a spell, like I said, you could have we could have flown by Wyverns. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right, that's right. That's if right. If you would one. rather keep it, uh, Wyverns is but... the one. Okay, cool. Because yeah. it was way cooler. And then I guess. If... Also, we have the awesome moment where we all mount up on Wyverns and fly away from the adoring Minotaur crowd, which <laughs> is really what I want. But, uh. <laughs> I have a feeling if we fly too close to the city on wyverns, though, we'll get like shot out of the sky. <laughs> so we'll keep low to the ground, off the radar. Oasis, though, and then mm-hmm. and then oh. lead to Mirage, and then pawn shop. Sure. We're gonna have to sneak to the pawn shop, right? I think so. Possibly. I mean, we can move during the day, right? It just has a lockdown in place. Right, Rob? Or is it so martial law that... Eli? Like a curfew? Eli? Okay. Eli could use um, his uh, phenomenal cosmic powers to cast Seeming and make us turn us into guards so we can move about freely. I don't want to do something like that that would necessarily, like, draw, like, undue attention. Like, if we can move, because we're not necessarily wanted criminals, mm-hmm. as long as we're obeying the law, we'll be fine. Right? We don't have any mm-hmm. indication that we're wanted criminals, do we? Or a few. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think I'm happier as Makud is happier as a newly made god than a, to walk around in his own form. Um, and if the guards don't uh, get on a bad side, probably the better for them. Okay. By whom? I I understand. Yes. Thank you for delivering that message. Um, we have a few errands to take care of, and uh, then we'll see about the summons. That was way easier than I thought it was going to go. Hmm. That is interesting. Uh, you, I imagine you two talking, and Makud is looking directly above both of you at the quickly retreating guards. Just like, hmm. just, just do something. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> we will definitely have to decide how we want to handle that. Yes, that is. Uh... An interesting development, as we know that uh, Noriga is in the palace, and I wouldn't be surprised if she has connections to Turian, considering her behavior. I mean, it seems like the kind of thing that he would do, I mean. The main question is, do we want to willingly step into this trap? Exactly. But perhaps we shouldn't discuss that out here on the streets. That does seem like a good idea. In case the walls have ears. Mm hmm.
on into your shop. Yes, to our shop. You knew I was coming? Mm hmm I am Abrashmina Adalim. you know exactly what I came for. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Sorry. Oh. It sounded like she went over and did that for yeah. me, so I was very confused. I got it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I misunderstood. Uh, so, yeah. She'll... Yeah, yeah. I... I was a little too, I was all like, oh, she got like a vision that I was coming and do what I was going to do, blah, 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 blah. Anyways. Um, yeah, Abrashmina will like pick, pick up the, uh, the garment and turn to the, uh, old woman and, um, say, uh, what can I give you for this? And uh, Abrashmina will just uh, smile and say, you do not know what uh, treasure it is you held, uh, but thank you for taking such good care of it. And she's going to give the woman a thousand gold pieces. <laughs> it is not nearly what this is worth. But uh, thank you. <laughs> and I'll lean over to the kid. I really don't understand how haggling works in a shar. <laughs> <laughs> I, you're asking the wrong person. 
Yeah, to the cooch, the opportunity <laughs> just did what he would have done. Yeah. <laughs> just, just hand over a random pile of, a random assortment of coin, and then I'm yeah. like, that's enough. <laughs> I just hand over whatever feels good. Um. <laughs> Remind me to never let you buy things for me. Or spend my money. You can spend buy me all the gifts. You, yeah, you just you can't spend my money on things. I'll spend. I have to teach you how to haggle, all of you. <laughs> he kind of like puts his hands up, like he's not going to spend any of your money. Oh, okay. Quick, quick, grab our money. <laughs> 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 They... Murder you. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? That's right. Um... Oh my goodness! I just realized that we went into a dragon fight and Bryn didn't use her necklace. Because of fireballs? Mm-hmm. That seemed like a really poor idea, considering I was surrounded pretty much early yeah, on yeah, yeah. in battle with a bunch of people. You know, it allies. Just, it was just you know combat and you didn't throw a fireball around. <laughs> I was calculating in my head multiple times. Okay, what's the radius? Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't ask how big the room was. I said, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's the most me quote ever. I imagine I... next up is going to be six eyes to talk about the trap. The veil off. Oh yeah, the veil. Veil's drop veil. Drop the veil and off, then... and then uh, six eyes probably. Talk about the trap. Yeah. Sure. It's only a trap if you enter the way they're expecting. If we enter on Dragonberg, they probably haven't prepared for that. <laughs> Yes. I do have a question though. Before we be like, oh, we gotta go turn the veil in. Are they gonna make her keep it? The veil and all of them. Like, if she could use it, is it good? What does it do? <laughs> I mean, you gave everybody else broken items. It's about time I get one. <laughs> I get broken. I get broken chaos abilities. 